Welcome to January 9th, 2010. Seventh day of the week. Not a work day, but it's the Sabbath. The Lord proclaims this over in Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. And you'll find the word rested and resting in the two verses. The word they use there in the Hebrew is Sabbath. Well, we get our word Sabbath. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry, our daily walk with Jesus, day nine of the year 2010. Sure going fast. Brethren, I suggest you uh, open up your Bible so that you can read along with me, and if you need to pause it, use the pause button in the left corner, and that will, you will be able to start and stop this little study. Well, we're going to start with Luke, chapter 1, verses 34 through 38. Mary asked the angel, But how can I have a baby? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit shall come up on you, and the power of God shall overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be utterly holy, the Son of God. Furthermore, six months ago, your Aunt Elizabeth, the barren one, they call her, become pregnant in her old age, for every promise from God shall surely come true. And this was in the tenth month of God's holy year that he proclaimed this. The month that we call December, this would be in late December or early January, in the month the Chaldeans called Tishri. And if we want to look into our word December, look at the Latin, the dec, D-E-C, is the word that they use for ten. Okay, Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. I am willing to do whatever he wants. May everything you said come true. And then the angel disappeared. He, as Jesus, was born holy just as Adam was created sinless. In contrast to Adam, who disobeyed God, Jesus obeyed God and was thus able to face sin consequences in our place and make us acceptable to God. You'll find that over in Romans chapter 5, verses 14 through 19. I suggest you read it. Willing obedience. A young, unmarried girl who became pregnant, risked disaster. Unless the father of the child agreed to marry her, she would probably remain unmarried for life. If her own father rejected her, she could be forced into begging or prostitution in order to earn a living. Mary, with her story about being made pregnant by the Holy Spirit of God, also risked being considered crazy. Still, Mary said, despite all the possible risks, may everything you said come true. When Mary made that statement, she did not know about the tremendous opportunity she would have. She only knew that God was asking her to serve Him, and she willingly obeyed. Do not wait to see the bottom line before offering your life to God. Offer yourself willingly even when the outcome seems difficult. A year of needed prayer. Help me, O Lord, to walk in the footsteps of your holy life, denying myself and becoming poor, that those around me may be made rich. Teach me how to gain by giving and how to find by losing, according to your word. And... You hold fast to my name. His, I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dwelt bountifully with me. Your daily walk on the narrow path will bring you eternal life with the Father and his Son. The beautiful gardens of prayer. Mark chapter 14, verse 32. They came to a place named Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. 
never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. If you've been making void the word of God, if you've been proclaiming the first day of the week as your Sabbath, that's a tradition of men. And that will send you down the broad path of destruction. I'm not saying that. Your Bible says that. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. We mentioned the narrow path here. That leads to the salvation. But it says only a few will find it. Why? Because they like the tinkling of the ears, as it says in Timothy. They like that broad path. All the good things, such as Christmas and Easter. All the fun things they like. God gives you better times. He gives seven holy days for you to uh, to participate in. You'll find that in Leviticus 23. You can find it through the whole Bible. The fact is, the whole seventh chapter of John is dedicated to the Feast of Tabernacles and the last great day. The Feast of Tabernacles. The first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. It can be shown that's when Christ was born. Well, brethren, do you want to follow the Lord on his narrow path? Get off that broad path. Get down on your knees and repent. Ask the Father and the Son for forgiveness and to show you and give you the wisdom and knowledge of his word. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.